Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. We're back on this motorcycle fender, and uh, this was uh, just created on a lock. There was no design intent or whatever, so uh, we're going to put this little ducktail in the back here. We got it going on the sides, but uh, because there's so much crown in the panel here, and we have that hard spine, uh, I wasn't really getting the look that I wanted, and. Uh, as a, as a result of, of flattening this out a little bit, I'm getting this spin and turn off over here, which I think actually looks pretty good, and I don't think it'll cause any problems. So what I'm going to do is, there's too much metal right here, and we're going to shrink this up, and we're going to shrink it up with a torch. So we're actually doing design work in the, uh, the middle of the production of this, uh, making this uh, fender. So we'll heat, heat this up and shrink this down and see if we can get a little more ducktail action going right here. All right, so we got a better setup right now. Got it secured. We're gonna take and shrink this up. When we get it hot, it gets very plastic and malleable. You don't want to hit it super hard. I probably want to get a block of wood right under the tail here because we're just flattening out these sides. So we'll heat it and beat it. Now what you got to be careful of is uh, hitting it too hard because you're in the malleable state and if you hit it too hard you're going to be stretching it the other way. You just want to make the metal go into itself. See what that looks like. I like that, but we want to taper that uh, off a little bit more. So it's just too abrupt right now. I want to get some of this tapering. So this design on the fly uh, is not probably a, a really good idea to do, but um, there's nothing wrong with it. A little bit of discovery. Find out what you can do. So now that's getting a little more uh, tapered down, so I like that. We're going to go a little bit more. That's looking good. All right. So now what we got to do is it's uh, 
just like you've shrunk or whatever on the edges, you have uh, this walnut situation. So now we got to planish this out. And because we have these uh, edges flanged, uh, it's going to be difficult to get the English wheel in here. So we have two options. Uh, we can use a planishing hammer or we can just uh, planish it out with uh, the hammer and dolly or the slapper and dolly. So let me try the planishing hammer. We'll leave it even hot. It will work it a little bit hot. It's a little more malleable hot. So I'm going to set the planishing hammer up with a die and uh, see if we can smooth that out in the planishing hammer. All right, we have a situation here. We've got to choose the right die. Uh, we've got to have clearance for everything. Now, oftentimes they have that little riser in here. We might have to put that riser in. So, the, the, if you have a planter in hammer, there should have it has should have some uh, adjustability to be able to work around these problems. You can see where that flange is going to bite right there. So, I definitely have to put that that riser in. And then you also have the problem of the edges of this top die are going to bite. You're going to get edge bite which is a problem with English wheels, power hammer dies, planishing hammer dies, even your auto body hammers, you got to watch that edge bite. So we need a top die that has relief on the edge. So we got this one here. It's got a nice relief on the edge and that should work really good. And uh, we don't need much of a crown on the bottom die. Uh, either this one or the next one over. But I have to put the riser in, so I'm going to stop and put the riser in. Alright, so I have the uh, planishing hammer all set up and let's give it a shot here and see what happens. Oh, smoothed out pretty nice and I'm going to try getting a nicer transition right here. Let's see, put it upside down. And this is uh, uh, obvious that you can't do this with the English wheel. This is where the planishing hammer really comes in to play. I need to, I want to get that transition a little nicer right here.
That's flowing good. Let me check this side. That feels good. Let me give it one more here. I'm liking that a lot better. So now let's bring these sides in and see what that looks like when we get those in. All right, now we're going to just knock those down. I'm using this uh, dolly here that has a nice tip to it there, so I'm going to tip that down. That's looking pretty good. It didn't actually flare out too much there. Now we're going to we're going to widen the sides a little bit here. We're going to weld on some sides, so that's starting to look better. I'm going to try to use the stretcher jaw here and see if I can stretch that around just a little bit more. All right, so that's what it's going to look like on the wheel. Looks like it's conforming nicely. So let's go over to the stretcher. I just want to try to get that edge to come around a little more. That, that's looking good. Nice look to it. Alright, now I think we'll trim this a little bit and put a little point to it here. We'll just take some uh, little design liberties here. Let's see what, what will look good. Let's see if we put a, a, a concave line in here. Let's see what that looks like. That's a concave line. And then we maybe put a convex line here. Now if we cut off that much, we're going to lose a lot of our reverse, so maybe that's not what we want to do. So let's come back a little further here. We'll go like that. I think that might look a little bit better. So we'll take these lines out. And we'll put some blue tape on there. That was just an idea exercise. I think that'll look pretty good. Maybe that side line, that side line might want to go up like this too. So I think that looks pretty good. And then the, the, the sides will come down about here and we'll We'll put some uh, bead or something on the sides before we weld them in. And uh, we'll put a doubler on there. 
So I think that looks nice right there. So duplicate that on the other side. I right, use the blue tape to lay out where I've got to cut, and I think I'll uh, I'll just take some snips and snip this in, and then I'll grind it to fit. So let me get some snips. I generally don't snip too much anymore because uh, I use the electric shears. Now I can shear right, snip right on that edge, but I think I'm going to go a little bit away from it. I'll grind it to where I want to be. So I'm going to. Give myself a little cheat allowance there. It's always a good idea. And then you have to pop this off here. All right, so we'll pick those little fragments up. Those aren't a good idea to have on the floor because you'll step on them. And I have neuropathy in my feet. and it, it, I won't even feel it if it goes into my toe. All right, so we'll grind it up now. <laughs> So the important thing here is always take your time. Um, you're not in a, in a race here. Uh, it's probably impossible to make motorcycle fenders as a business uh, proposition. Because I've looked these up and uh, they, they stamp them out and they make them out of really heavy stock and I think they're like 150 bucks at the tops. I think even cheaper. But what they can do is only make the same design over and over and over again. With this skill set, you can make any design you want and you can try different things. And line is so important. I mean, just an eighth of an inch here will make a big difference. So I think that looks pretty attractive to my eye. It's a nice looking tail for that fender. Now we got to uh, work on the front. I think that's all we'll do tonight is a, a little bit on the front here and then we'll leave the side treatment for another episode. So what we did here is we put this spine in and I think this spine, once we get, well, I got to reset my die up again so that I can put that uh, spine in the front and uh, we'll probably re-roll this too. Bring this down and kind of fade it out to nothing right to here. So that's, uh, we'll be able to do that tonight, I think. So the back is almost finished. We might have to do a little hand work in here. Doesn't look too bad. Actually shows nice when you look at the symmetry and everything, it's looking really good. And I think that's got a really nice side profile, nice back profile, everything's looking good. So this is an issue. Somehow I wandered off the line here, so we have to make the correction. This peak is about probably that much off. It starts about right here. So we might have to roll that back out again and then we'll replot the peak and then roll the peak in again. So remember metal is clay. You can make mistakes just like you do in clay. You can undo them redo them again, make the mistake again, and redo it again, and on and on and on. So uh, these errors happen when you're doing video and you, you're not really paying attention as much as you should because you're thinking about the video. So that's a good excuse anyways. So I'm going to replot this. Hopefully I'll get it right this time. That eyeball is pretty good, I think. And, and learn to trust your eyeball. The eyeball is a great tool. So we'll, we'll double check this with a pair of dividers. And um, looks like I wandered off my mark there. So yeah, let's get a pair of dividers and we'll measure from here to here. And Well, actually it's going to be distorted by this. So I'll wait until we get this rolled out. We'll go back to that Harbor Freight wheel with the two inch wheel and we'll just roll this out. And then we'll check the distance to the center here. And we might have to adjust the adjustment and then uh, we'll set the roller up again and re-roll that in. And this is going to need a, a similar rounded treatment in the front too. We'll, we'll round that off in a nice way. We'll try a couple different lines and see what, what works. It's so funny how that, that aesthetic, I mean, some of that is probably traditional. You're, you've seen a fender or something that has that uh, that kind of cut like to it but uh, maybe if you've never seen a motorcycle fender before in your life you might come up with something like that who knows it's just funny how that happens
Okay. That should be rolled out enough. So now we'll get, we have to plot the line. Um, have to plot the line on the inside. I believe that's the way I did it. All right, that line I put in there wasn't uh, adequate, so let's start again. We were over here, so we moved about a quarter of an inch over. That looks pretty good. Of course, we got to put this on the inside, but I want to prove it out on the uh, outside first. So. That doesn't look too bad, so I like it. Mikey likes it. That eyeball is pretty good, so we'll give that a shot. I got to set up the uh, tipping wheel to put that tipping wheel in. And this is why I don't like motors. I want to go nice and easy here. Actually, I can see it really good this way. But I can't see it backing up. Maybe if I get over here, I can see it backing up. I don't know. Hopefully, I don't cut my head off. what that looks like. I think we fixed it. Looks pretty good. All right, and now we'll uh, trim that line. So I'm going to lay out this line here. Yeah, like that. Let's see if we can put a nice line in there now. So now, on the metal, I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. Tighten it a little more. Tighten it a little more. A little more. A little more. A little more. Yeah. Now loosen her all up and see what we got. I might have to do it one more time. We'll see. I'm trying to get a little progressive action there. Yeah. I'm gonna have to be a little tighter, I guess. We'll get in. Tighten it up a little. Oh, I'm gonna go a little more. Alright. Back that off and see what that looks like. Oh, that looks pretty good. Fades out nicely. Oh. Just what I wanted. Excellent. So we'll get this cleaned up. Uh, we'll get that fire scale off. We'll use some of that navel jelly, uh, which is that phosphoric acid uh, gel. And that'll all clean up both sides. We'll get it nice. And uh, now we'll uh, round this front. We'll put some lines on it. So repeat that same theme that we did down here. Kind of went, uh, actually we first started here. Maybe we'll make this one a little sharper or so. Let's see. See what sharper looks like. 
So basically that line just follows through. So I'll lay that out with the blue tape, cut it, grind it, and see what we have. Since I don't own a motorcycle, actually I've only ridden a motorcycle for about uh, maybe 10 minutes in my entire life. Uh, I think I was 17 when I rode my first motorcycle and dumped it in a gravel yard and that was the end of motorcycles for me. But I love motorcycles, I just don't know that much about them. I like cars, I know a lot about cars. Don't know anything about airplanes, I like airplanes. So. I, I love boats too, as you know I got three boats. There's going to be some boat videos too. So we're going to get one of our, my boats going. Uh, pretty soon. It's getting nice and warm outside and uh, June's going to be coming around pretty quick. That's when the water gets really nice and tolerable in the lake that uh, I grew up on. So and that's only about 15 miles away. They got a beautiful launching ramp there. So since I don't have a motorcycle, uh, I suggested to Mark, I said we, we should come up with a uh, a contest or some giveaway or whatever will give away the motorcycle fender so when we get it all finished one of our lucky subscribers will I'll ship it to you UPS as long as you're in the US or Canada I'm not going to ship it uh, overseas overseas shipping is really expensive so there we are it won't balance anymore so we got a point in the front so we got the both ends finished off pretty nicely. We got that uh, fading out, nice little peak. Got a bobbed back. We got the nice ducktail going on here, and we have a nice point on the front. It's looking really nice. So next step, we'll put the side pieces on. Maybe put a bead or a, um, a joggle and then we'll reinforce that edge and I think uh, we'll call it a day at the end of that and that that should be the next video so I hope you enjoyed that it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop remember please subscribe give us the likes comment you can there's a little notice bell there if you hit that it'll tell you that we've got a new video out and remember that metal is clay it's ray from pro shaper workshop